All right, this video is intended as a review for the sample problems given on vector addition. These are non-perpendicular vectors being added up. I'm going to take a visual example problem first. So we're just going to look at what's going on here and get the concept down, and then we'll apply it twice. I'll probably break this video up in two parts, and uh, we'll do one sample problem mathematically on this part at the end, and we'll have a second part with a a problem out of the textbook from page 93. Uh, in resolving the vectors, here I've got three different vectors. So I've got a person starting way down here, and they're going to walk a certain distance at a certain angle, and then they're going to turn, and they're going to walk another distance at another angle, and then they're going to turn again, and they're going to walk this. So what I want to do first of all is I want to show you that you can take each of these vectors themselves, and you can break them down into the horizontal and vertical components. So the first thing I'm drawing in here are the horizontal components. These are the x directions of these vectors. And I can do the same thing with the y components. That one's going up, this one's going down, that one's going up again. And what I want you to see on this is I can physically take these vectors, because remember, adding these vectors together, you put them head to tail, and it doesn't matter how you add them up, but I'm physically going to put all of the x motions together, just like this. And I'm going to physically do the same thing with the y vectors. I'm going to physically move them out of the way, if I can grab a hold of this one here. And I'm going to take the y vectors, and I'm going to put them together. Now this one's going down, so remember it starts at the head of the vector, so I have to move it all the way up to there. And then this one's going back up again, so again it starts at the head, so I get the head to tail just right. And I'm off by a little bit, but that's because I'm not real careful about measuring these out. And as you can see here, I've got all the motions in the x direction and all the motions in the y direction. And that gives you the overall vector. And somewhere in here there's supposed to be a, there it is, it got moved somehow. There's the overall purple resultant. And if you look, I've got the resultant in purple, I've got the x motions in red, I've got the y motions in blue, and what we see here is a large right triangle. And if I know what all of the x motions are added up, and I know what all of the y motions are added up, I get a large white right triangle where the red dotted lines are the resultant in the x direction, and the blue dotted lines are the resultant in the y direction. Then we can apply Pythagorean's theorem, and we can actually do some math. That's the general overarching concept of this. All we're going to be doing is adding up the components and then determining what our resultant is. Let's take a look at our first sample problem. This is just one I made up myself. This is a simple two vector. Here's our idea. We've got a person starting here at the red, and they're going to be walking 40 degrees north of east, 25 meters. Then they're going to turn 20 degrees south of east and walk 35 meters. So what we can do here is I can take the vectors, and I can break them down into components. And I'm going to do this visually first. So here is the first motion in the x direction, and here's the second motion in the x direction. And you know, one thing while I'm thinking about this is I'm going to, well, I guess I can't do changing the colors of the other one because it's blocked out, but it's okay. So the dotted lines, the red dotted lines, are displacements in the x direction. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the displacements in the blue direction in the y direction, rather. I'm going to put those in blue. This vector is going up in the y direction, so head to tail. And it looks like I missed a little bit. So let me try to do a little bit better job. I'll extend this just a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing with the blue vector, y direction. Now this is going down. Somehow I missed this. Blue. And we're going down here. And so it went down, and so this is our motion in the y direction of our second vector. Now, one of the things that I like to do is I like to break these down into simple terms, and I like to give them some labels. So I'm just going to crudely write these in here. The red vector, I'm going to just call vector A. And the blue vector, I'm just going to call vector B which means that for vector A, and somehow I changed the color of that line right there, 
This is supposed to be a red line. That must have been why I got confused a little while ago. For vector a, then, this side right here, right here, represents a in the x direction. So I'm going to call that a in the x direction. The blue line right here represents vector a in the y direction. And this red dotted line represents b in the x direction. And the blue dotted line down represents b in the y direction. So now what I'm going to do is, now that I've got my labels in here, I can actually start doing some math. So we're going to scroll down here just a little bit. And the way I do this is I make little column tables. And what I want to do is I want to know what all of the x directions are added up. So I apply some mathematics to this. And I say, all right, my a in the x direction is going to be the hypotenuse times my cosine of 40. Because 40 degrees is the adjacent side, so this right here is the x direction goes with cosine. b in the x direction, again, I have the adjacent angle, so it's going to be the hypotenuse times the cosine of 20. Now, this is assuming you don't have to set up, you know, cosine of theta equals this over this. We've learned now the pattern is the hypotenuse times the trig function. All we have to do is figure out what the trig function is. And in this particular case, the trig function is the cosine for both of these. 95% of the time that's going to be true, but you still have to check every time because sometimes you can be given tricky, tricky angles to deal with. Now you're going to do the same thing with the y directions. So a in the y direction is going to be 25 sine 40, and a in the, or b in the y direction is going to be 35 sine 20. But one thing we have to be careful here is of direction. a in the x direction is going to the right, so it's definitely positive. A in the y direction is going up, so it's definitely positive. B in the x direction is going to the right, so that's definitely positive. But look at B in the y direction. B in the y direction is going down, so we have to make sure we include a negative sign on that. So when we add these up, we're actually going to take this and subtract this. Now, if you've got three vector motions, you do this with three vectors. You do A in the x, B in the x, C in the x. A in the y, B in the y, C in the y. If you've got five vectors, you have A in the x, B in the x, C in the x, D in the x, E in the x. So it can get kind of complicated, and these drawings do get kind of messy. All right, Our overall vector, I should just draw in here. I'll put this in purple. But our overall vector would start here and end right here. And I didn't get it in purple, so we'll change it to purple color right here. And see, as we start adding all these colors in, we start getting messier and messier. All right. I should also note that sometimes you're drawing will lead you a little bit astray because you're not drawing these to scale. You're just kind of roughly sketching these out. And you have to be very careful about thinking about, well, I know that's going to end up in this certain spot. Your, your drawings, because you're, they're not scaled, can lie to you. But the mathematics never will. So you're going to rely on your math here at the end to figure this out. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add up all of these, which I've already computed in the calculator, and I already got some answers from them. Notice how I'm not actually figuring out what a in the x direction is. You can if you want to. You can have another equal sign here and then give me the number. But I actually don't care what a in the x direction is. I just want to know what their sum is. Because their sum is the resultant of the vector in the x direction, rx. 25 cosine of 40, 35 cosine of 20, and these are in degree modes, by the way. Make sure you got them in degree modes. Comes out to be about 52 meters. Now, in this one, we take 25 sine 40 and we subtract 35 sine 20 because we're going down. And that gives you a resultant in the y direction of about 4.10. Now, I said sometimes your pictures can lead you astray. Well, you got to be real careful uh, with your pictures because sometimes, you know, you don't draw them correctly, but the r and the x and the r and the y will never lead you astray. What this is telling you is that the resultant is... In positive 52 meters, that's to the right or up. And the resultant in the y direction is 4 meters to the right or up. They're both positive numbers. So the next thing I like to redo is I like to redo the drawing. So instead of putting the purple vector all in this right here and making a giant mess of my picture, I just redraw r in the x direction, which is 52 meters, and r in the y direction, which is 4.1, add in my new resultant, and I now have an angle right here, and I can figure the hypotenuse. That's a piece of cake. So hypotenuse, that's easy.
resultant overall vector is r in the x direction squared plus r in the y direction squared. I guess technically I, I forgot to put the square root in here, so let me hand draw that for mathematical accuracy. The square root of all that, and that's 52.2 meters. That leaves us with trying to figure out what our angle is. Well, again, the angle, we've talked about this before, the angle we want to calculate is relative to our start position, and the way I've drawn my triangle, this right here represents the angle that we're interested in. The tangent function is what we're going to be using then. The tangent of this angle is ry over rx, and we had said before, and we've done this a couple of times, you're going to have to take the arc tangent, or the inverse tangent, and it turns out to figure out what our angle is, you take the inverse tangent of the opposite side, ry, divided by the adjacent side, rx, making sure that you're in degree mode, and we get an angle of 4.5 degrees. So this angle right here is 4.5 degrees. Well, relative to what? 4.5 degrees, what of what? Well, again, your arc is touching the easterly direction, and we have to rotate to the north. So we're rotating north of the direction east, and so our overall vector is 52.2 meters at an angle of 4.5 degrees north of east. All right. That concludes this problem. This video will be part one, and we'll do a part two video using the sample problem in your textbook on page 93, which we'll have uh, in the video here in a little bit, and we'll talk about that. Um, so hopefully you'll take a look at that, and uh, then you'll be prepared for our next meeting.